Today's Saturday Spotlight is Excellently Elementary. Sheridan is a first grade teacher and she is so sweet. Her voice is so soothing and she just has a very calm personality from what I can tell from watching her videos. I also follow her on Instagram. She just is really warm and enjoyable to listen to. I was watching her setup videos because I love watching other people's classrooms come together. It's just really fun for me. I, I'm one of those people that likes to watch like the flipping the houses shows where it starts with like rubble and it turns into something beautiful. I love watching the transformations of things. So this has been really fun for me. She also likes planners. So she's got a planner flip through and she's got a little bit of haul stuff on here too. So there's a little something for everyone. So if you have not checked out her channel and maybe you haven't heard of her before, you should check out Sheridan from Excellently Elementary. The link is down below. All right, I have had some requests to show how I use my Cricut. And I would like to put my name on my teacher planner. So I thought, hey, let's just do it. So what I do is I go to Cricut.com. Okay, and then I go to design. So they have a design studio just on Cricut.com and it's free. And it needs to load a little faster. Okay, now it, I'm already logged in because I just stay logged in all the time. Here are things I've made in the past. You can save your designs, which is really cool. So see some of the things I've made before. This is something I made a long time ago. And I put them on those popcorn containers you can get from like Dollar Tree. I made like family movie night popcorn things for all of my family as their like stocking stuffer kind of gift. And I put the family last name on things. And then this is my mother-in-law. I gave her a little personal thing. And this is what I used on my little green wooden like toolbox thing in my classroom that I showed last week or two weeks ago. I think it was two weeks ago that I have my sweetener and creamer in. And I think this is what I used to put on my Michael's cart. And this was just an idea of stuff. I think, actually I think I ended up using these for the sweetener and creamer because these didn't turn out so well. Anyway, and then you keep, they keep the quote thing you saw in my classroom. That's where I have that big roll of the art paper. And I'm going to write a new quote on that every week. And I just remembered I didn't change the quote. Hmm. Alrighty. Well, I might just save that one for the week because I really like it. It's about kindness. Anyway, I'm going to start a new project. So you just click new project. Then you have this grid and see how it's measured out. Okay. So most vinyl, not all, but most comes in 12 by 12 sheets, kind of like scrapbook paper. So that can kind of give you a frame of reference for your size. Now this thing here is not eight by 11 or eight and a half by 11. It's probably like nine by 12 because it's a little bigger. If you look inside, my paper is a little smaller than the actual notebook. It's wider. The notebook is wider than the paper. So I can make a little bit bigger name. So I'm going to try to make something here. So you just go to like, if you're going to just make words, go to text. And you type what you're going to type in the box. Let me do that real quick. Okay, so I type Mrs. Bond in the box and it put it here. Now you can go up here in the fonts and change it to whatever font you want. They have fonts you can buy. Also the fonts that you own are on here. The ones that you have on your computer. So I'm just kind of looking. I'm going to just try it out and see what it looks like. I kind of like that one. Um, that's an Amy Grosbeck font. Um, I like Boss Lady, but it does not print well for me. Because it's too wispy. Um, well, when I tried it with my glittery vinyl, it just was a hot mess. So I need to figure out how to work the glittery vinyl. So we won't be doing that. This one's kind of neat. I really like... There are some fonts that I just like to use in my stuff. I kind of like this one. Leggings are pants. That one's cute. Okay, I think I want to do that one. And I'm just going to make it much bigger. So you can change your font size by going up. 
See how it's really, really getting big. I can go pretty big on this. Okay, that's like 102. That's a pretty good size. That's around the same size, I think, as the one I did for my Michael's cart. So I think it'll fit on here. I think it'll be good. Looks like it'll be nice on here. Okay, then when you're ready, if you like it, you can lock it in place if you want to. I don't worry about that unless I'm trying to, unless you want to put certain things with it. Like if I wanted to put a graphic with it, I would lock it in place. Otherwise, what it does is whatever you have on this page, it arranges it on the screen to where, like if you had several names, it would like put them side by side. Like if you had second grade, for example, I might do that too, actually. What? I'll just show you. I'll just put that on there. We'll do. So, okay, sorry, this is going to be weird to type it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Second. Okay. Grade. So I'm having to move you so I can see the keyboard. Okay. And now this is its own little thingy, so I can move it. Well, if I can get hold of it. There, we should be able to move it. Let me see if I can move it and then I'll, I'll separate them out and show you. Okay, I needed both hands so I could drag it. So see so you have a second grade. Now if I if I wanted it to print like this, then I would lock these in place and it wouldn't move them around. But I don't care because I would do these separately. Okay, so I'm going to go up here to make it. It's not focusing very well. Can you see that better? Okay, see a little green button, make it. Okay. Saving project. See how it moved it around so that it could use the space better on the actual vinyl. And on here, you can see it's 12 by 12. So you see how it's going to lay out on your vinyl. So if you have a scrap of vinyl that's at least 12 wide and at least, I don't know, three probably would be safe. Four, I'd be four. Four inches, 12 wide and four inches deep. It would be big enough for this. I think that looks fine. I am going to, when I print these out, when I have the thing cut it, I would cut these apart anyway to put them in different places. But if you had a whole, like if you're doing a t-shirt, you would want the layout the way you want it to be all in one piece. So then you would lock the things in place and it would not move them around to save the vinyl space. Does that make sense? If you don't like this, just go back a screen and then, and you can change the material size. Like if you have a 10 by something or 11 by something or whatever, you change it because not all vinyl is 12 by 12. The one I'm going to use, I think is going to be 12 by 12 or close enough. And uh, it should work just fine. So let me go over to my Cricut and show you what we do over there. I just remembered this binder over here that I got from the dollar spot. I wanted to make a writing thing for this. So I'm going to put more things on this screen. So I'm going to go back. Sorry, the thing's not focusing very well. Okay, I'm going to go back. Just use the back arrow. Okay, and now I can add to it. So I'll probably do another Mrs. Bond and then writing. I just clicked on this, and I'm just going to copy and paste another Mrs. Bond. Copy and paste it another Mrs. Bond, and I should be able to just, there, drag that down. And I'm probably going to put thing just like this one and I'll just copy and paste that one and I'll change the wording to writing. Okay so I just copied and pasted it like I would do on any document and then I erased the second grade out of the box. I will put writing in its place. If I can do this I'm looking behind here. So an I yes. T nope. <laughs> T I and G. Okay. Well there we go. Now it says rotting. We can Move that little dude around if we wanted to. Okay, I think I might want to make that bigger. So we're going to probably make it, I don't know, like the 102, like the Mrs. Bond. So it's not focusing very well. There we go. Boop, 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 boop. Okay, that looks pretty nice. I might make second grade a little bigger too. I think it can handle it. So probably not as big as Mrs. Bond because it's a sub thing, subtitle thingy. But 78 looks fine. 
Okay, I like that. I'm going to go up here to make it. Now on a Mac, I have to actually physically plug in the cord from the Cricut to the computer. So let me see if I can do that. Let me find a hole here. I don't know if it's right side up or upside down. That's upside down. Okay, and then turn on the Cricut. Let's go over here to my pile of stuff here. And find. I'll have to find some vinyl that I want to use, so I'll be right back. Okay, I have little strips of vinyl that I'm going to use. I thought the yellow would be look like, really pretty. I have little strips of vinyl I'm going to use for these. So I thought this yellow would be really pretty on this design here. So I'm going to use that for this one. And then I thought the pink would be really pretty on this one. So I'm going to have to separate out my wording because it'll print all on the same one otherwise. So I'm going to take off one of the Mrs. Bonds and one of the other things and put it on a different project. And then we'll get to cutting. Okay, I've taken off the other Mrs. Bond and the other one that said second grade. And now I'm going to go to make it again up in this little green box here. There. We'll click my ant. Okay, it's processing it. That looks good to me. All right, we're going to open the Cricut. Okay, and this is your sticky mat. You gotta stick your vinyl to that so it doesn't slide around when it's being cut. So let me get that on there. All you do is line it up and you stick it down because this is sticky. And that just holds it and then you're gonna slide it. See these little things here? You're gonna slide this into that. Like a so. And then you're gonna push this, which pulls it in. Push it in all the way. Okay, now it should be ready to go. It looks happy. Okay, if you like the way it looks, you like the layout, you're ready for it to cut. Oh, one thing I forget to sometimes check is the settings. So we're gonna go to vinyl. This is just regular vinyl. See all the different settings on here? Paper, vinyl. So if you wanna print, have it cut out something paper, that's great. Vinyl, iron-on. See, I was having trouble with the iron-on transfer one because it wasn't cutting all the way into it like I needed it to, so I need to play with that one a little bit. Um, light cardstock, cardstock, fabric, poster board, and then custom. I've never used that one, but I've used the vinyl, and I've tried the iron-on, and this iron-on transfer I've never used before, so I have to play with that. I've used the cardstock. I've never used the fabric or the poster board. So if you're wanting to make like letters for your walls or your bulletin boards, this is a great way to do it because it'll cut them out for you and the nightmare's over. You can laminate your paper, laminate your cardstock or paper before you have it cut and then it's ready to put up. It's really good. Okay, let's go over here. Now, down here in the little green, the bottom of the screen here, it says continue. Okay, it's gonna be ready to process. Set material, we did load okay then press go see the little symbol there it should be flashing on the cricket there it is push that there we go Alrighty. this is exciting it's gonna do its thing Okay, now it shows it's done. See, it says 100% finished, unload mat, and that's where you go over here, and you push the little button. It takes it out. All right, can you see it? I can't really tell that it's cut a little. Oh, there we go. Can you kind of see? It says writing, and this is bond. Okay, now we need to pull this off the mat and cut the things apart, and we'll start pulling off the letters. I've got all the tools I need. Caitlin has borrowed some of mine, so I need to get them back from her. This does have an X-Acto knife and something else with it. Um, here's some weeding tools and lifting tools. This I just got from Amazon, so I'll try. I'll see if I can find it in my list. It should still be there. And then I've got my scissors to cut my pieces apart. This is my 
squeegee thingy to push it down really well. I use this Glad Press and Seal as transfer paper. Contact paper works really well too. And here's the thing I'm gonna put it on. So let me cut, I'm gonna pull this off and cut my things apart. I can't really tell what it is on there, but I'll cut my words. I'll cut the strips because they're not gonna go on the same place. And I'll show you. You can see that I cut my words apart. And then this is what I have left. Now I could probably do one more thing if I put it this way on my mat. So I'll lay that over there. And then we're going to peel off the paper so we can see the writing underneath. Okay, let's see if I can show you. So we're gonna get a hold of this. Yeah, maybe. Find the edge, goodness. Okay, here we go. Oh, this is the Mrs. Bond. Oh, it's so cute. I'm just pulling off the excess vinyl that you don't need. And I just kind of roll it up into a ball, throw it away. Okay. Isn't that cool? Now these, you have to use a little tool to pull those pieces out. I like to use this little hook here. And just get in there. See that little piece there? And I just stick it to the vinyl glob that I have. So that's the little loop in the R. I'm going to get the one in the S. It's not always easy to get a hold of. And you want to be careful not to get the piece you want to save. There we go. Got that one. Stick it on my, whoop, <laughs> stuck to the table. Okay. Oh, goodness. Well, they're sticky. Okay, there's that one. Now I need to do the B, the O, and the D. There's a chunk of it. Okay, here's another piece here. I have two parts to it. Okay, we got a hold of this one. Stick that on our piece here. Okay, one more. The D. If you bend it, I've found that sometimes it comes off, but there we go. There's a the little inside of the D. Okay. Now we've got that. Now what you need to do is get something to transfer it with. Like I said, I used the press and seal. Just need a little piece of that. Okay. And you just literally take it and put it on top of your piece. What it does is it adheres to the thing so you can pull it off the paper and position it on the thing you want to do it on. So I use my little squeegee thingy and I just push down to make sure that it's stuck to the transfer paper really well. I actually used a piece of clear contact paper at school because I had forgotten my press and seal and it works better than this. It really does. It sticks really, really well. My um, one of my firsty teachers that moved up with me had some. Okay, should be good. And it worked really well. So I might invest in that next time, but then you're just gonna see how it's pulling that off. Sticking to the transfer. You wanna be kind of careful that you don't rip anything. I'm gonna pull it off like this. See, that one didn't stick, so you wanna pull, make sure it stays. That one's not going to stay. I have to pull it at a different angle to get it to stay. Try this way. You might need to squeegee it a little more to stick it more. Because we want that to stay behind. And I might actually have to kind of scrape that with my nail a little. That little, the part of the bee is not wanting to come off. So, goodness gracious. 
Come on, you. There we go. Okay. I convinced it to stay. All right. The rest of it's working pretty well. Oh, I don't want to speak too soon. Okay. Now we have Melissa's Bond. Now we just have to lay this on the binder. There. I moved you over here so hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Okay. You just kind of position this where you want it on your piece. So, ooh, that's a good size. Okay. I think... I think that looks really pretty good. Maybe up a little, I don't know. I think up a little. That looks... Okay, I just laid it on there, I didn't push it down. You can see what that looks like. I think that looks pretty straight. So now, we just need to press it down. All right, let's see how this works. All right, and you just peel it off. I'm gonna peel it off this way. Okay, some of it's not sticking, so I'm gonna push it down some more. Oh, it's turning out really good. Can you see that? I'm trying to get a better angle while I pull. Oop, ah, the S doesn't want to stay. There you go. My dot stayed good. Okay, let's see if I can do an above shot. I hope you can see this. I think that looks good. Check it out! And then you can just push over it again. But look how cute that turned out. Isn't that neat? All right, now it's time to do the other one. Start the process again. All right, I got everything weeded. Now we do, I can use the same piece of iron transfer paper. Not iron transfer paper. <laughs> transfer paper, the press and seal. I can use the same piece again, except there's a spot that's stuck to itself. Let's pull that loose a little. As long as it has some sticky left on it, you can reuse it. No point in getting another piece. Okay, let's lay it on there. Maybe we'll lease away. Right, push it down. Use my little scraper. Make sure it's on there good. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here. I'm doing this. See how I want it to stay on. Okay, now I'm gonna pull it off. I have to stick down. I'm getting a little static. Okay. That's good. I think the eye in writing didn't come off. There we go. The dot. Let's try it from the G side. Oh, it's not working good. This is where the contact paper would probably work better. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to lie. That was a little tedious. So, it's on here. <laughs> I need to position it on my binder. Yeah, that was a little much. That was a little frustrating. Okay, we're going to try to center it underneath that. Let's see. I think that looks good right there. And this is pond. The thing is, once you get it on there, you're not getting it off again. So you better like it where it is. <laughs> so... Be picky and finicky, because once it's on there, it's on there. Okay, now I'm going to gently push these down, because I had such trouble getting it to stick to the press and seal. So I'm just lightly putting it on here, and then I can finger press it after I take... The, oop, my, my little dot for my eye didn't stay. Okay, oop. The top of the tea didn't want to stay. Go slowly. Oh, my tea got a little goofy too. I need to fix that. Oop, my G. The loop of the G isn't want to stay. So I might go from the other side. You can always pull from a different angle if you need to. Okay, now my tea didn't like what it did, so I'm going to use my little weedy thing and see if I can slide it over a little. Because it was a little silly looking. 
Okay, I think I fixed it. All right, now I'm just gonna take a. I'm gonna take the paper. And I'm just gonna lay it over the top, so I can use this to kind of make sure all the letters are down without scraping the actual letters. Like a press cloth, kind of when you iron. Okay. Well, there it is. Ta-da! It's not showing up as bright as I thought it might, but I think it's okay. And it might be slightly crooked, but it's a wispy writing, so how could you really tell unless you're staring at it? So I think it's good. I'm happy. The letters do kind of go, you know, anyway. So that's that one. Now we need to cut the other one. All right, it's cutting this one, and I made this one bold, so it should have a little bit thicker lines. Let's go over here and release the mat. All right, and we'll peel it off and cut the words apart and stick it on my planner. In the interim of the Cricut doing its thing, I went upstairs and switched the laundry again. So now I'm on load number three. <sighs> and I had to add some more sweetener and creamer to my coffee that I made and I got some breakfast so I'll be having that after I put this on here and Caitlin got a new piercing or piercings a week ago Monday like it'll be a week ago tomorrow because she wanted them to start the school year and it was a triple the it was called a triple forward helix and I have pictures and video of her getting them pierced, but you can't really see a lot. But I do have a picture of her with her new piercings. So if she gives me permission, I will post that right here. They look really cute, I think. But the problem is now she's been having trouble with those piercings. Her ear has swollen. It's become red. We think she might have an infection. But... I don't know if it's infection or maybe it's a metal allergy. They use surgical steel to pierce with. But did you know that surgical steel has nickel in it? And lots of people have a nickel allergy, which is why a lot of people have to get sensitive ear earrings. That doesn't have nickel in it. It's nickel free. So I didn't know that stainless, not stainless, I didn't know that surgical steel had nickel in it, but it does. And actually, sterling silver is even worse. It has a higher concentration of nickel in it. So that's a big no-no for her anyway. So we're thinking she might have a nickel sensitivity because she did have trouble with one of her other piercings that was kind of similar to what she's going through right now. So we may end up having to take her somewhere today to have it checked out. I told her she should probably call the piercing place because they can tell her what to do if they think there's a problem. So I'm going to have her do that and we'll see what happens. All right, let's get this going and see what it looks like because I'm excited. It's a pineapple color, more of a lemony yellow, but I'm not going to be picky. I didn't mention, but every time I get done using my sticky mat, I put the little plastic cover back on it because it does attract all types of things. Cat hair, dust, fuzzies from your clothes, little tiny gnats, and you don't want them stuck in your mat. You can tell I have some cat hair stuck in here because they love to walk on everything, little turkeys. So I try to keep it covered whenever possible, and then I slide it underneath my Cricut so it's not so appealing for the kitties. Okay, so now I need to see if I can cut this apart, see where it ends here. Okay, I have this strip that I could probably make a word or two with, so I'll put that over here underneath. Okay, now I need to separate out the Mrs. Bond and the second grade. Or if you like the spacing, you could leave it the way it was, but I don't think it centered it. 
I think it put it to the left. Yeah, it did. I like things centered. And honestly, I could have had the mat do that for me, but you know, I didn't. Exactly, boo. I didn't do it, did I? Okay, make sure that you cut around your hanging down letters so you don't cut them off. I almost did that one time, but thankfully I didn't. Okay, now I've got my pieces got apart. And you know, I got to peel the backing off and put the sticky on and everything. So I'll just show you the finished product when it's done. And I'm going to have a helper. Thank you. Yes. Going to have a helper. Okay, I got one. I don't know if you can tell if that writing is any thicker. I told it to make it bold. Yeah, it did. Boo's like, really? Okay, there's that one. And then, of course, I have to weed these out. We're going to do the second grade one now. You wonder if there's something to that whole jinxing thing. Oh, I got it with one thing. Here we go. Okay. Here's the one that says second grade. Oh, that's the end of it. You can see. Okay. This needs to pull a piece out. There we go. Oh, one little glob left. I'm going to take... Oh, it's stuck to my finger. <laughs> there we go. It took a lot of it out. So, great. so I need to weed the little pieces that didn't come out. And I won't bore you with that. I'll do that. And then I'll show you putting it on the thing. Oh, I think that's a little big. Oops. Maybe we need to go sideways. Oh, I could put them. You know what I could do? I could cut this apart and slide it over more. That might actually do it. Because it's just a little bit big. Or I could do Mrs. I could do like this could be under. Like because it's a little wide. I made it a little too wide for this. So let's try this. I could do Mrs. Bond like that. That'll look cute. See, I'm gonna Ain't no thing. It'll work. It'll be just fine. There, see? Okay. Now a good idea is to kind of lay your things out the way you think you want them on here. So you can get your spacing kind of figured out. I'm a century kind of person. Everything has to be balanced for me to like it. So I hope you can see this okay. Let's do it like this so I can see what you're seeing because I think I was just showing you globs. Okay, so I'm going to kind of see how I might like to lay it out before I do my final permanent things. That's going to be cute, isn't it? And if somehow, some way, somewhere, whatever, I get switched again, I can just peel this part off and change the grade level. <laughs> I felt very solid in first grade. And then, because they don't move people. Our district doesn't move people. We're not one of those districts. You start in one grade, you probably will retire in that grade unless you don't want to. If you want to move, they're more than happy to let you move. But I've never, never heard of anybody just being moved. So it's... It's a whole new world. I think I'm going to start with this one. I put it on first and then build from there so I can get my spacing. Because I don't know that I want that at the very bottom. Maybe I should put, but then I don't want those right next to each other either. See what I mean? That's why you need to play with it first. Because once it's on there, it's on there. Maybe I will put that at the very bottom. Line it up with the G. Put the second on top of that. And figure out where to put Mrs. Bond. I will do that and I'll be back with you in a moment. We're about to put it on there. Woohoo! Well, it's not showing up as much as I had thought, but it's still kind of pretty. Okay, now we're going to go for the rest of it. For the Mrs. Bond part. I'm not sure that's going to show up real well with the, all the yellow. Hmm. Oh, well, it'll be subtle. Yeah. I guess I could, really, I could put it on this plastic piece. If it would show up any better. Since that would work better, I don't know. Kind of want it to be protected, so I think I will put it on this. It's okay. It doesn't have to be super bold. Well, if I want to do it funny, I 
if I want to do it straight. I kind of want to put the misses there. I guess I'll put the bond here. I don't think that's going to show up a lot because of all this yellow in here, but it's okay. Hmm. I probably should have used black, but I was trying to do kind of, you know what I could use? I could redo it and do black on this one. I might do that. Because I want it to show up. That is my name, at least. I found a use for those. Now, I'm not sure how long this will hold up. We'll see. But it's not going to get a lot of wear and tear. I thought I might just keep this, like, in my small group area or something. But isn't that cute? I think it looks good on there. I'm just smushing the crud out of it so it stays better. <laughs> but I don't, as long as it's not sticking up, I don't think it'll come off very easily. This is not the uh, iron-on transfer kind, so it won't hold up forever. But I'm not going to be washing this. This is just one of those little pencil pouches that I got from the dollar spot. That was actually a dollar. I think that looks really cute. This is screen printed and this is Cricut. And I'm not sure you can really tell because it's so thin. See? But I will definitely flip it over. And I'll like I'll probably run this thing over it a few times. But I think that looks really cute. And I didn't waste it. Okay, for this, I'm going to make black. Like Mrs. Bonnet Black. Now this does look better if you hold it up away from the glare, but it's still not perfect. So here's my trash. I'm going to make another Mrs. Bond out of black and then I'll put it on there and show you what it looks like. I think that looks so cool. You can see I don't have a Mrs. Bond from my planner because the Cricut stopped cutting through the vinyl. I don't know what happened. I'm going to stop for a while and try again later, but I've had to throw two pieces of vinyl away already. It did fine on this one. And I did fine on this one. So I don't know what's going on. I'm going to start over later, but I've shut everything off. I'm going to shut the computer program off and just go do something else for a while because I don't know. I changed the cutting depth and everything. I made sure the vinyl was stuck down really good onto the cutting mat. So I don't know what's happening. It's very strange. Good morning. My mother-in-law works for a senior center, Meals on Wheels, and they get the day-old Panera bagels, and she has been snagging the cinnamon crunch bagels for me, my absolute favorite. So I pop them in the microwave for about 10 seconds, and they're so good. So I'm going to have my coffee on my bagel and go downstairs and try to get myself together for the school week. <clears throat> okay, what I'm about to show may be shocking to some viewers. Discretion is advised. Are you ready? I hope you're sitting down. Check this out. Actual lesson plans for next week. Completely. I know. I'm glad I'm sitting down. I shocked myself. And these were done Friday. I can't believe it. Yeah. See what I mean? I knew it'd be hard for some of you to see. But yeah, I've written everything out that I want to do next week. And I just can't believe that I actually had enough thought to write it down. Yeah. Crazy. Okay, I just noticed a problem with my lesson plans already. <laughs> my really first week of real actual lesson plans and I've already messed up. See where I have Rooted in Reading week two, Edward Emu. You see the book that it's supposed to be for week two, A Bad Case of Stripes. Edward the Emu is book four. So when I labeled everything, I labeled them so very wrong. Okay, so my fix, these little page flags. Yep, that should cover it up. 
I'm going to use orange just because it's close to the color that is for that thing. So I'm going to see what this does. It's crooked, but I'll fix it. Okay. I think that that will do it. I am really weird about... I don't like to scribble on my plans. That's why I've always done computer plans. But this may work for me better this year because I can change stuff like this. I don't know. I may just do a different color every day just for the fun of it. So, yeah. I need to fix this. Oops. Because I need to write the right book on here. Grr. And I'm not going to reprint all this and rewrite it all because that would just be more insanity. So I'll be going back and writing a bad case of stripes on each day. And next week when I write it down, I'm going to write the book here and leave it. And not write it on the rest of the days because it's the same book all week. So I think I have two. I can't really tell. I think maybe that's just one. I don't know. Crazy. This little thing of post-its, they're not official post-its. They're sticky notes. This came from Walmart like last year, I think. It's made to fit in like a three ring binder, I guess, or like an A4 or A5 planner, but I just put it in my little pocket of my happy planner and it works just fine. Then I have various, look at all the cat toys and junk, <laughs> it has various sizes that I like, so I keep them handy in my little pocket for boo-boos like these. So I'm going to finish working on this and then I'll tell you some of the things I'm going to do this week. All right, crisis averted. I have the right book written here, and I'm not even going to write on these. <laughs> I'm just going to leave them because it's the same book all week. So I may just start putting the book actually on a little page flaggy and sticking it on the front because then it's got an arrow that points to the rest of the days, which is kind of cool. Okay. <clears throat> we start off in the morning at 8.15 with our first thing. So that will be power hour time, but right now we're not doing actual power hour. We are reviewing our school-wide expectations. We are a positive behavior support school. So that's what SWPBS stands for, school-wide positive behavior support. So tomorrow is a review day of all the things that you did last week. And so let's see, last week we did the bus, the cafeteria, and the playground. And I oops did the hallway too. But like I said before, you can never have too much practice on how to behave in the hallway, right? Yeah. So my actual day for hallway is Tuesday. So we'll be doing that again, hallway and restroom, which is good because we're going to use the hallway to get to the restroom. So that's perfect. Then we don't have anything on Wednesday or Thursday. So I'm going to have my kids do birthday books because we have five July birthdays that we need to make books for. And then we can start reading them to all of our friends. On Friday, we have our special class during that time period because Fridays are shorter since that's our early release day for teachers to have OLC, which is our version of PLCs, in the afternoon. Yes, we meet on Friday after school to discuss all the things. And that's, for teachers, really absolutely the worst day <laughs> to meet because we're all fried. But for parents, it's the best day because they can get a little early start on their weekend. I'm starting Go Math. So chapter one, lesson one, we're doing even and odd numbers. Then we're going to write equations with equal add-ins to represent even numbers. We're going to use place value to describe the value of digits in two-digit numbers. Write two-digit numbers in expanded form. And then I don't do go math on Fridays. I leave Fridays open for assessing because since I said Fridays are short and I don't have enough time to do a full-fledged lesson because I give myself like 90 minutes for math so we can fully do a lesson plus rotations and small groups and things. We will be starting keyboarding with our second graders soon. Um, we don't have the means to start that yet, I don't think, because we haven't been given the program. I'm not sure if it's already on the MacBooks. We have a MacBook cart. But I found out in our first Friday meeting that each MacBook doesn't have a charger. I don't know how that happened. I don't know why that wasn't already addressed. I would think that that would have been something they would have taken care of over the summer. There should be a charger for every device. So we'll see how that goes. There's Bingle. She came from upstairs. 
Okay, and you saw my oops here. So in Rooted in Reading, we're focusing on a bad case of stripes. And I'll tell you each day what we're doing because I have it here. Well, it's not that set. It's the set back here. I have the plans right here. So I'll just be sharing that week by week because it's a different thing each day that you focus on. We'll be starting right on week one boot camp. Yay. So we'll be talking about brainstorming tomorrow, writing on Tuesday, revising on Wednesday, editing on Thursday, and then publishing on Friday. So hopefully they'll have a published piece by Friday, something small. Then for social studies, this is my social studies and science time. We will be talking about our school-wide expectations of be safe, be respectful, be responsible, and also ready to learn. I throw that in there. I have a Teachers Pay Teachers resource that was made for first graders, so I just don't use the first grade pieces, but there are posters that ha there is a student that represents each of these different character traits, and they're really cute posters, and I'll show those to you at school because they are ready to go because I've used them for several years. There's like Ready to Learn Robert, Responsible Ryan, Really Safe Rita, and I don't remember who the respectful one is, but I'll show you. And then I've put the book that I'm going to read to go along with each character trait. So Safety, Officer Buckle, and Gloria, of course, is a really good book about safety. And if you don't have the book, it is available on YouTube. And I think it's a scholastic video, so it's really good. I've shown it before. Sometimes I like to read the book, and sometimes I like to show the video. It just depends. Sometimes I like to switch it up for the kids. Because, honestly, when you show it on the screen, everyone can see the page and the pictures. But I also like them to be able to listen to an actual book being read from the paper because I think they get plenty of screen time. So I don't do that a lot, but every once in a while, just to mix it up. Then respectful, we're going to read what if everybody did that. That's really cool because it goes through different situations. Like, I don't feel like doing this today. I think I'm going to do this. Well, what if everybody did that? Then it would be chaos, right? So it kind of gets the kids thinking about Oh, that's why we do the things that we do, because if we didn't, it would be a problem. Being responsible, we're going to read the worst day of my life. This student kind of fibs a little bit as to why he doesn't have things done and ready, because he was being irresponsible, but he's making excuses for his irresponsibility. So, you know, it's not his fault. So that's a really good book for that. And then... For Ready to Learn, we're going to read The Girl Who Never Made Mistakes. This is about a girl who had always done everything perfect until one day something went terribly wrong. And she didn't know how to deal with it because she had never had that experience before. This would also be good for growth mindset, I think, which is something I'm doing this year. We haven't started talking about it yet, but we're going to this week. I also have the book Ish that I'm going to be reading to go along with growth mindset when I do an actual growth mindset lesson. And I was watching Jeremy Michael book yesterday and he found a growth mindset little printable booklet on Teachers Pay Teachers that was a freebie. And so I looked for it and I found it. So honestly, all you have to do, don't even search for the person, just search growth mindset and then click the free button in the little search panel because you can narrow your search down by all kinds of things. Click free and it was made by... A first grade teacher and I honestly can't remember what her name is on Teachers Pay Teachers but you'll see it it's a growth mindset freebie printable booklet there's only one I think and it comes up very early in the search so that's gonna be good I'm gonna print that out hopefully Monday so I have it ready so I can throw that in there and then for stem we're going to be doing the saving Sam challenge that's the gummy worm and gummy lifesaver thing where you have the cup and Sam has been floating around in the water and his boat has capsized and he is under, like the, the life preserver is under the boat, which has overturned and he's outside of that and he has to figure out how to get to it and you have to help him, but you can't touch it. You have to use, I think it's like two paper clips you can have to touch the things with, but you can't physically touch them with your hands. So you put kids in groups. And you have them like come up with a strategy of what they're going to do to save Sam. And they actually like discuss it. They collaborate. They write it down on this planning sheet. And then they try different scenarios. 
And when they do it or don't do it, then they can like reflect on what worked and what didn't work on another sheet. So I think that's going to be really good for that. We are kind of buddied up with another class in another grade. Like I have a first grade buddy class that has been assigned to me. But this one we're going to just do as our class because I want to team build in my classroom first before I branch out with other classes. Okay, and then I've got some like reminders that my kiddos are going to start going to different things. Because I will forget for sure. Thankfully, the people are going to come get the students. Also, we're going to be testing for reading levels periodically. We are very fortunate that our district and our building gets us a substitute that will watch our class for a day. We have one day with a substitute so we can do our Fontes and Pinnell testing. Sorry, Mango's jumping around on stuff. But I don't like to leave the room when I'm testing, especially at the beginning of the year. I mean, I've been in my classroom for four days with these students. I don't want to leave them with someone else already. So I like to test in my room and give them quiet activities to do because they need to be able to work quietly anyway because I will be doing groups back at that same table that I test at. So it's good practice for them. Plus I can keep an eye on things and they can keep going with the things that I want them to be doing and the way I want them to do it. It's probably just a control thing on my part, but it makes me feel better that I'm not the only one that does that. I think only maybe three people in second grade are going to actually utilize the substitute. Now, later in the year, I might go ahead and utilize the substitute because my students should be able to handle the classroom norms and all that stuff by then. But we haven't established any kind of routine yet, really, because like Fridays are totally whack. You can even count Friday as a normal day because it's really not. Everything's different. The schedule's different. What we do is different. It's just different. Friday's just a totally different animal. So Monday through Thursday... We will have an established routine and then Friday is just whatever. So, I mean, there will be some semblance of order to Fridays eventually. We will do the same types of things each Friday. But Fridays are just weird because everything's at a different time except for lunch. So that kind of throws people for a loop. Threw me for a loop last week. I was constantly having to look at my schedule to figure out what we were doing and when. But we made it through and we got everything pretty much done that I wanted to. We didn't get to do Friday Fun Club. There was no time for that. And during Friday Fun Club, I also have the kids do ketchup and pickles so they can catch up on one piece of unfinished work before they go do Friday Fun Club. I don't want them to take the whole time to do unfinished work because then they'd never be motivated to finish so they can get to Friday Fun Club because they never will have had a taste of it. So I have them pick one piece to finish because it's always something that doesn't take very long. They've had time to work on this, whatever it is, before during class. And really, they should have had enough time to finish it. So usually... The students that have any unfinished work laying around is because they just didn't do it. They were goofing around and talking and not using their time wisely. So they learn pretty quickly to get their work done so they can have Friday Fun Club time because it is a reward for working hard all week. And if you didn't get your work done, were you really working that hard? Hmm. That's something to think about. Okay, so you've seen my plans for the week. And I've also got, we're, we're starting are talking about AR again. So the admin is going to come during our plan times. So there are two pods of second grade groups. We have a pod of four teachers, which is what I'm in. And then we have a pod of three teachers, which is down the hallway from me. And we have two different plan times because four people go to specials and then the next three go to specials. So during that time, the admin is going to come and talk with us about AR, how we feel about AR, any ideas we have for AR, because they're wanting to get second grade cohesive as to everybody does it this way because for the last 15 plus years each second grade teacher has basically kind of done their own thing as far as how they allow the students to check out books what level books they're allowed to check out how many of each level they can get all that kind of stuff so we're trying to make a like a common plan for everyone since there are three of us that are new to all of this I did do AR in first grade when I first started teaching because back then they did AR in every grade, but we decided to disband it after that year because it was just too much for first grade. If you don't have experience with AR, it is a good program, I think, for more established readers 
because it deals a lot with comprehension. A lot of it's comprehension. That's basically what you're, you're scored on your comprehension of the book because you read a book and the quiz that you take asks you questions about the characters, the setting, the plot, the solution, the problem, all the things that happen in the story. So you have to be able to be a pretty good reader and comprehend what you read to do very well in the quiz. Well, as a firstie, you're beginning to read. I'm going to go step on everything. And it's, it's hard to get all your balls in the air and flowing like they're supposed to because there's a lot for you to think about when you're a new reader. And that's just another thing for them to have to do. So that was really, really hard. Some kids did great because some kids were higher readers. But the average Joe firstie really struggled with that. And then it's another thing for the teacher to keep up with because you have to keep up with sending reports home to parents and you have to set goals for them. And you have to check their goals. You have to track their goals. You have to check their testing record. You have to see how they're doing all the time. So it's just something I need to get in the groove of doing. And since they're revamping the whole system of how we do it this year, that's probably good for me because I don't have any preconceived notions of it. So it's going to be easier for me than it is for the, the second grade teachers that have always done AR. So that's a plus for me. Alrighty, I think, I don't know if that's going to stay on there. I might have to tape it down. I am going to try to figure out exactly how I'm going to do things. I need to look over my Rooted in Reading plans. The good thing is the lovely ladies that made this, Amy Lemons and Katie King, have it all mapped out. See, there's Monday right there. I'll just show you there. So you're reading and comprehension stuff, your vocabulary, grammar portion, and there's a back side to this page. Let me see if I can take it out of sleeve. Okay. And my, I printed them upside down. See, they have to flip. Whatever. Now I know to flip it on the long side instead of the short side or whatever. Whichever direction I did it, I did it the other way on the other ones and it worked out great. Okay, and then reading and comprehension. Oh, that's Thursday and Friday. Grammar and vocab. So you get your whole week on a page. I love it. This would be perfect for a sub. You wouldn't even have to write out your plans for that day. You just leave this and just tell them to do whatever day. I would put like a little sticky note here. I'd probably put like a little page flaggy on here and go here. Here's your stuff. Follow these. Here are all the pieces. Which I have the vocab cards cut out. And I have the little question cards. I love how each day it introduces another set of vocabulary. And then I would leave them up in my pocket chart so the kids could reference them. And the grammar portion I think is great too because that's a big thing in second grade is grammar. We did a little bit of it in first grade, but first grade mostly focused on phonics and not grammar so much. But yeah, hopefully many of my second graders got phonics down in first grade. Not that we won't do it, of course, but I will tackle that mostly in my small groups because then I can tailor it to each individual student rather than just splatting it across the whole classroom in which probably 75% of them don't need that. We'll tailor it, be more individualized learning. All right, so there's that. And also there are plans for um, write-on as well. And if you think you're interested in trying out Rooted in Reading here or write on this resource here was free just go to amy lemons teachers pay teacher stores um, stepping into second grade and check this out look at her freebies if you go to pinterest and you type in rooted in reading a lot of things will come up and you'll be able to find this right away so it's got an overview for each month of what books you're going to need and then it kind of tells you a format of everything so like i said that's free Right on has a week free of the boot camp to get your kids started. So if you want to just dabble in it a little bit to see if you like it before you buy it, that's a good way to start. I was just watching Devonte Kelly's latest video. I think it's week eight for him of his vlogs. And it's like week three or four of school, something like that. He was talking about Teachers Connect and I'm on Teachers Connect. If you're not on Teachers Connect, I highly recommend that you get on there. It's free. It is a great resource to connect with other teachers. You can post questions. You can post ideas. You can just collaborate with other people. It's really great. 
And more and more people are getting on there. Every week when I'm on there, I see more and more people and more and more familiar names of people, which is really awesome. So if you would like to join Teachers Connect, there is a link in my description box every week. So you can click on there and it'll take you straight there so you can get signed in. All you have to do is have a username and password. Really easy. And then just jump on there. You can put a post on there. You can put a question on there. You can comment on someone's post. You can answer a question. You can find people to, I think it's called following, kind of like you do on Instagram. You can click to follow people that you know or even people that you don't know because you'll get to know them. It's really, really great. And I love how I can kind of pick people's brains on there because, yeah, I have people in my school that I work with. But sometimes the thing that I'm wanting an answer to is something we all have a question about. <laughs> so none of us have an answer. So it's a great way to get more ideas from more viewpoints, more perspectives. I like that I can get ideas from all places around the country and the world because we have people from England and Australia on there for sure and probably some other countries soon. Also, you can get different grade level perspectives. You can get different gender perspectives. You can get different age perspectives. We have veteran teachers on there. We have new teachers on there. So it's really a smorgasbord of everything awesome about teaching. So I highly recommend you get on there. If you haven't been on there, you are missing out. Anyway, I posted a question about the Great Pencil Challenge, and he talked about my question on Teachers Connect on his video. And I was like, oh, Devante, that's so awesome. Thanks, man. So yeah, he responded to my question on Teachers Connect and he also read it on his vlog. I was like, oh, how cool is that? So he posted this resource in um, his description box and also on Teachers Connect. So it's a freebie, as you can see. And I didn't even realize I already had this because I said on my question that I had been researching the best way to deal with pencils because I'm so tired of the pencil thing. Really, my classroom never had a big issue with pencils until recently. The last couple of years, I've had like pencil monsters, like they destroy the pencils. They rip the erasers out of the ends. I'm talking brand new pencils. They rip the brand new eraser out. Hey, Mango. <laughs> Oop. And yeah, let me get that back up there for you. Oop, let go. They, yes, they will rip ow she's biting a lot lately so she must be teething and she's like relentless piranha kitty go over there anyway they pull the erasers out of the pencils like out of the brand new pencils Ugh! so you have this lovely long beautiful pencil with no eraser in the little metal thing so i throw it away i'm like that's not good and plus somebody could get hurt on that metal thing they're sharp then i have kids that would snap pencils and they would say it was an accident but really, if you've snapped five pencils, is that an accident? I don't think so. Maybe they were doing some kind of stress test on pencils and they were tracking their scientific progress to see how much force it took to snap a pencil. I don't know. But they didn't ask permission to run this experiment and it wasn't their pencils. So, no, not okay. Not cool. <laughs> Mango's playing with Pikachu right now. Anyway... So I've always just done the sharp and dull bucket and that's worked for years, years and years and years. Kids did not abuse it. They would go get a pencil when they needed a fresh one. They would trade pencils. But then it's like kids didn't realize how to do it anymore. Like it was too hard to, you know, go put the pencil in there. They just throw their pencil on the floor or they throw their pencil away or they wouldn't trade it in. They just go get a new pencil. So then at the end of the week, their pencil box is filled with like 12 pencils. I'm like, guys, you only need one pencil at a time. You can only use one pencil at a time. And I would always let them get a new pencil. If it broke in the middle of something, all they had to do was put up one finger. That was our symbol for pencil. They would just look at me and put up one finger. They wouldn't go, I need a pencil, after I trained them not to. But yeah, we had little signs that we could just pencil. This is tissue. And this is drink, because it's a W. You put it by your lips. And it was no big deal. And this is restroom. It was no big deal until recently, like the last couple years. Like I said, I've had like pencilzilla. Like they just storm through the pencils. They break them. They eat them. They lose them. They throw them away. I don't know. And now that we've started power hour, it got really bad because the kids have to take their supply boxes or their school boxes with them to the classroom that they are having their math intervention in. And they come back with no pencil. And I'm like, I know you had one. 
because I make sure every student has a pencil when they leave my classroom because it drives me bananas when my intervention group comes into my classroom from all the different classrooms. I'm like, I don't have a pencil. And I look at them like, honey, you need to come to class prepared because we only have like 25 minutes that we can do stuff. We don't have time to be looking for pencils. So yeah, it just got really, really obnoxious last year. So I'm like, okay, we're doing something different. You know, the definition of insanity is trying the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. So I decided I would try something new and expect a better result. So I'm really excited that um, what I had in my mind that I was going to do after looking at all these different people that had done different pencil things, I kind of thought I picked the best thing that would work for me the way I could that I could keep up with that Devonte is doing it exactly the same way that I envisioned it in my head. And it's working for him. He's done it for three weeks now. He said, it's working great. And I'm like, yes, see, that is what is so awesome about teachers connect because you're talking to real teachers that are in the classrooms. They're in the trenches every day. They deal with these nitty gritty little annoying issues and they have solutions that work for them that could work for you. Now, I'm not saying that every teacher is going to have a solution for every one of your problems because we, our kids are all different. They all have different quirks, different personalities. And who's to say that the pencil challenge might work for me really awesome this year and really bomb next year? You don't know. That's why you got to have a toolbox full of tools to draw from, right? Yes, that's kind of how I feel Teachers Connect is. It is like a teacher toolbox where you can pick people's brains any time of the day or night and just check back and see if you've got some nuggets of gold there to glean. So that's my plug for Teachers Connect for the week. If you're not on there, try it out. It's awesome. It doesn't take much time and it is really beneficial. It will boost you up. You can put anything you want on there. Maybe you're sick and you're like, what do you do when you're sick? How do you keep yourself going? Maybe you have a question about classroom management. Maybe you have a question about math. Maybe you have a question about social studies. I mean, hey, anything goes on there. So jump on there and try it out. It's awesome. 